This is 2021. This is the Bet Red Super League. Be ready. Hello there. Yes, it's that time of the week again. Welcome along to Eddie and Steve-O, the podcast, sponsored and supported by Betfred. Well, Steve-O, it's been quite a week. Busy, 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 almost like being back to normal. Let's start at Emerald Headingley, where you and I were privileged to be at the lunch laid on by the Benevolent Fund to celebrate the life of Matt King OBE. An emotional roller coaster of an afternoon that was, wasn't it? It certainly was. It was uh, a pleasure to be there, and I am so happy that the name of Matt King will go on forever and ever in regards to helping out those unfortunate people who do get injured in our game of rugby league. It was a, a, a sensational afternoon, and I must say that uh, I enjoyed it that much that I didn't wake up too crash hot the following morning <laughs> because it was uh, it was a long time since I'd seen uh, seen some of those uh, important people can we say Ralph Rimmer Nigel Wood uh, Stephen Ball Tim Adams it was fantastic because during that time when Matt King had that injury those four people have worked tirelessly to ensure that his name will always be remembered Absolutely they have and uh, now it is uh, going to be uh, known in future as the Matt King Rugby League Education Bursary so people can apply for that bursary uh, and uh, that will help them along in their careers but what a champion bloke Matt King was and that came over 100% of that lunch didn't it I mean Richard Lewis, CBE, all the CBEs and OBEs and MBEs of the game you've included, uh, all there and Richard Lewis almost uh, almost broke down in tears. Touching moment. Yeah, it was an emotional time because he was in charge of the RFL uh, when the accident uh, and Matt did get injured there. So, no, no, look, it was good that, that those people, I mean, the weight of the gongs that was hanging round the neck <laughs> <laughs> was very heavy indeed. But wonderful tribute for everybody who was there. The media was there, uh, television, etc. And uh, I was so pleased because I became very friendly with Matt. And he had a, a tremendous sense of humor. And I, I mentioned the fact that he could have gone into a shell, Eddie. He could have said, you know, I, I don't want to be involved. I hate rugby league, etc. But it was exactly the opposite. And it was as though he'd been sent a message that you are going to be the person that will go forward and ensure that everyone else who sadly get injured, they will be looked after. Yeah, you met him many times, didn't you? Um, how will you remember him? A legend. And also the fact that his smile could light up the darkest room. He was an amazing person. He was, uh, and as you say, a legend of the game, and his name will live on for years and years to come. Fantastic. Well, while we were there, the World Cup and a possible postponement was high on the agenda around all the tables. Now we know it is off. It will take place next year. Safety of players was on the mind of all the 16 NRL clubs, apparently. But the reality is, Stevo, COVID will still be with us in 12 months' time. I think what the Australian people don't seem to realize is that they are trying to eliminate it, Eddie. And it won't be eliminated. We all have to understand we're going to have to live with it. We have to have an injection each year to keep it at bay. Now, Australia are trying their damnedest to make sure that they beat it. 
but it only takes one person to come into the country that it can spread like wildfire and a lot of people down under now including my family who are saying how long are we going to have to be in lockdown trying to beat it I don't think is the answer trying to live with it and overcome it that has to be the best way now there's only about 300 cases in all of Australia now compared to what we have in this country and yet we're walking around we can go on on buses on trains we can go get a meal and no restaurants are closed everything's fine because I think we've accepted over here that we've got to live with it simple well we have but, and the and the, the key is the vaccination program and we've been brilliant at that the vaccines yes. are being rolled out and please you know anyone listening to this go and get a vaccine for goodness sake but down in Australia it's been a bit slow hasn't it and that's probably why they're a bit wary well more than wary I think they were caught with their pants down in regards to the fact that they once again thought that they had it beat uh, on the similar lines to what was happening in New Zealand now Australia is a bigger country and more population than in New Zealand and it's affecting everything I mean the NRL they've had to move up to Queensland because there's there's fewer people with uh, uh, with the disease up in Queensland but it's now come to a point where there are people in Queensland now it's not a great impact but it's still getting up in uh, in the cases and they're actually thinking about it because of the pandemic restrictions where there's no crowd there's nothing they're even thinking about switching the grand final to New Zealand to be played in Auckland now their claim is that look we need atmosphere now in New Zealand they will get a crowd and the people at the NRL they feel that rather than playing the grand final uh, in, in another state Victoria uh, or, or somewhere in Northern Territory they wouldn't have to have, have any crowd so the obvious situation is we'll play it in New Zealand it's an amazing opportunity it is it is of course now steve oh it's the, the blame game as far as the the world cup postponement is concerned who who do we blame for this is it the clubs or is it one or two individuals who had it in for the world cup tournament i can't believe that that's the true case can you no uh, i said a couple of weeks ago that the biggest problem is the fact that uh, not once uh, during all the broadcast media papers uh, radio television not one mention and in fact the only big news that it got on the television was the fact that New Zealand and Australia were not going to the World Cup it was inevitable that it had to be postponed uh, until next next year but let's hope that common sense will come through I mean we, we often said about Clint Newton who's the Australian Rugby League Players uh, Association they never even contacted him in other words, the players don't count. They don't have a vote. And yet, the governing bodies of both New Zealand and Australian Rugby League, they made the decision. And their decision was that we cannot risk our players getting the disease. I wonder just how they really feel down there, though, steve because I was reading the independent newspaper that featured in Sky News uh, paper review over the weekend. I I'll quote you this, Cricket Australia is ready to ensure this winter's Ashes series goes ahead as planned by reassuring the England players and their families that they will be allowed to travel and the tour will largely be free of COVID bubble restrictions. Now, the family's bit apart. That's exactly what the World Cup organisers assured the Aussies and the Kiwis, isn't it? It certainly is. And we also mentioned the fact that if it had come from the government of Australia and New Zealand, yes, I would have accepted it. But Australia sends nearly 500 athletes to the Tokyo Olympic Games, and they are under the bubble, and they will have to uh, isolate when they get back. I mean, the, the deal was that after you'd run your race or did your jumping or whatever, you had to leave Tokyo within, within 48 hours. Uh, so that was an indication but uh, it, it's confusing 
And I know that a lot of hard work has gone on between uh, and our the RFL, uh, the World Cup organisers, etc. and so forth. But they've got to ensure that both New Zealand and the Australian Rugby League sign the form that says that they will attend. They refused to have it for this year, but the organisers have to make sure that that form is signed by both countries. Indeed so. Let's hope it's signed, sealed and delivered. Just as an an addendum to that uh, England cricket news, by the way, uh, I I have read uh, since that England are concerned about the series and they want the assurances uh, forthcoming so it, it isn't it isn't a black and white situation there's no there's no doubt about that okay the final hooter on the world cup until next year or whenever the next announcement from them is forthcoming i'm paul whitehouse and you're listening to oh eddie oh steve of the podcast oh suit you onwards and upwards then to old trafford now steve oh really really have i has been as disappointed in a top-of-the-table clash than I was on Saturday afternoon. St Helens and the Catalan Dragons, uh, it was, in the main, a non-event for me. I know Castleford, uh, C- Catalan rather had a host of star names out, but come on, it, it was a no contest, really. Yeah, a little bit of one-way traffic in regard to that. Um, I, I think that the, the Catalan were ensuring that they didn't get some of their players who were maybe sometimes at the end of the season Eddie you take a risk with certain players they'll go out under the field of play and it's natural for all clubs that they might be only 70% or 75% and I think that uh, the French outfit said look it's no point risking it at this point we need to get all our top players fit for when it comes to the crunch time and the crunch time is the playoffs so there's a little bit of politics going on in regards in the background. And I'm sure that Steve McNamara would say, no, I'm not going to risk him, I'm not going to risk him. And let's face it, the people that they had out, they were really premier positions. They are the ones that really make Catalan stick. Just listen to the, the star names that Catalan had out at the weekend. Bertieri, Garcia, Sam Tompkins, Davis, McElorum, Drinkwater, Lange. You know, all missing, three more injured on the field, a sin binning or two as well. Uh, Steve McNamara, though, pleased with the effort of his youngsters who came in. I suppose they did well to hold the Saints to 34-12, didn't they? Yeah, and I think that the tactics would have been, you know, let's just try to close down the St. Helens. I mean, they're a, they're a terrific side, and, and they're the, they're the favourites to retain the trophy. And uh, as I said, Steve McNamara would, was probably wise in, in not trying to push those particular players that you you mentioned Uh, it's all about what happens at the end of the season you've got to be in good control and uh, I I can't blame him if they if they weren't fully 100 percent why push them out if they're only 75 or 65 percent let's save them to the crunch games and it won't be long it won't be long and uh, Hull go to France on Friday so Steve McNamara will be hoping for a cleaner bill of health by contrast I thoroughly enjoyed the Lee Hull KR match on Sunday night I really do feel for Lee you know Steve it was another spirited display from them but they can't buy a win at the moment but they do put on a show for the cameras when they turn up at the Lee Sports Village don't they? They certainly do and uh, look I've got to give them a, a, a lot of credit in regards to the fact that they knew that they were, you know, behind the eight ball. They knew that they had to sort of get uh, into the teams very early in the game. Uh, and and I'm so pleased. Now, I don't know whether this is true, Eddie. You're you're nearer to uh, to all the all the sort of rumours that run around in rugby league. Is that I, Lee will be safe? There is movement afoot for no relegation. Is that true? Have you heard that on the grapevine? Yes, I have. And there is another meeting this week about the restructuring debate that's going on. It's a, it's a big argument, though. Would you be in favour of granting Lee a reprieve and giving them another year in Super League with two clubs coming up from the Championship to make it a 14-team competition? I would be in favour of it, um, providing that the other greedy Super League clubs don't do what they did to Lee before the start of this season. In other words, if you're going to have a full competition, then you must have the same amount of money being given to all the other clubs. Now, we've made it quite clear that 
the poor league, accepted it because they were desperate to get into Super League. They accepted nearly half of what was available in the TV money, etc. and so forth. Now, bringing up two more from uh, the Premiership is, I think, good thinking. But also, the rumour is that <laughs> after the first season, uh, three of them will be going back. Yeah, down to two teams of, of te- two leagues of ten in in Super League. Yeah, that, that, I like, that is. I like that idea because we we mentioned it last week in regards to the fact a lot of people who are, are not au fait with rugby league is that uh, what's this championship? What's this Premiership? What's the, what's this Super League? Super League one and two, that's what we should get. Yeah, it's yeah, simple, it's, isn't it? Simple to understand. Yeah. Well. You and I understand it, so that means it is simple. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right there. There's no question about that. Uh, Hall Kingston Rovers, fifth place just now, running out of time to play. And here's another problem, a mandatory 18 games to qualify for the playoffs. But they are being talked up big as possible grand finalists, the Hull Kingston Rovers. Can you see it? Uh, well, we do have upsets in the game of rugby league. Uh, but this probably would be the biggest upset that we've ever had. I know that when we, we, we beat Leeds when I was playing for Dewsbury in 1973, that was a huge upset. Leeds were like 20 to 1 on favourites. Uh, at Wembley, of course, when Sheffield beat Wigan, they probably are the two biggest upsets in the history of rugby league in this country. Uh, and I'm afraid that if Hulkinson Rovers lifted that trophy at Old Trafford, uh, that would probably be bigger than the two that I've mentioned. Fair enough. Uh, Toulouse will have an eye at Old Trafford if they do come up uh, for 2022. Uh, they're marching on at the top, Steve, over the championship. 11 wins from 11 now, all on English soil as well. If it is to be a 14-team Super League next year... They surely can't keep to lose out, can they? Another big win for them over the weekend. 66-6 in London on Sunday. I was there. I had to endure, um, what shall we say, a poor performance by the Broncos, an outstanding performance by, by Toulouse. I'm going to say that having seen that Toulouse side, they've got speed, they've got ingenuity, they've got height, they've got strength. And they look to me like a Super League side now. And if they do get promoted, which I think they're they're odds on to do that, and if they buy maybe two, three, or even four top range to just add to what they've got, they've got a very, very good squad. Good coach, and they've got the rhythm. The, you know they got they know that that against against uh, everyone against saying they're not getting in and this and the other. And, but they were outstanding. We the, 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 look, the London Broncos had no chance. They scored within the first sixty seconds, and from there on in, it was just one-way traffic. Toulouse and Catalan Dragons grand finalists twenty twenty-five. Then, hey, eh? <laughs> well, who knows? But the most important factor is the development of rugby league. We've had a, a, a bad insult on it when we've had to cancel the World Cup because I, I think. We were just ready to say, right, we are building back up the International Federation, the competition that Rugby League is worldwide. So it's a huge disappointment. But what will be great for Rugby League is to have two teams from France. Imagine the derby games that we get down there. And the wine is superb. No, I shouldn't say that. But the wine is superb in, <laughs> both, was... those, in both those areas. And uh, it it'll be fantastic I, I do not want to miss that first derby game between the two French outfits it will be classic and it should be a sellout and most importantly when you get a sellout TV coverage etc and so forth youngsters are watching and they'll say I want to play that game yeah, I can tell you're salivating at the fact that you might get two trips to the south of France because I know you really love Collier and all the areas around uh, Perpignan. You'd be there in a shot, wouldn't you, providing the uh, the travel restrictions are lifted. You, you, you'd probably you'd probably move down there. Uh, very expensive down there. I, 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 was, <laughs> I was born and bred in, in Yorkshire, but uh, every now and again, 
look, I enjoy their hospitality. Um, anyone that has been down to uh, Perpignan and all that area, Collioure, the, the, the harbour places around and about on that, on that coast, it's just not about seeing a game. It's like going on a mini holiday. It is fantastic. Uh, just just one bizarre game I want to touch on, by the way, before we move away to something else. Wakefield. They were 18 nil up at Huddersfield after a quarter of an hour. Huddersfield hit them then with 22 unanswered points. A crazy, crazy game from all accounts. Jake Wardle's try settled it. Uh, but another impressive performance from Will Price, Leon Price's son, of course. He's making a big impression, isn't he? He certainly is. I mean, he's got the pedigree, hasn't he? Yes. And uh, he, he, he's going to be a very, very good footballer as well. In the, in the next two years, I think he'll make huge strides forward. And I'm glad Castleford got back on the winning ways as well. Um, they beat Leeds, what was it, 32-18, and, and it was good to see that they're, they're getting back into the swing of things. Uh, they've been hit by a lot of injuries and postponements, etc. It's been a very difficult year. And I just hope that we can get everything sorted out for the next season, that we can all go to the games, enjoy it, have a few pies afterwards or before and a few beers and get back into the swing of things. And let's get rugby league back to the top of the table in the sporting activities, back to the top. Absolutely. Hi, this is Johnny Vegas and you're listening to Eddie and what's his name? Steve-O, the podcast. Away from the field, Steve-O, I was uh, delighted to receive an invitation from the great Johnny Vegas, no less, to take part in his annual charity bowls event at the Ruskin Sports Village in St. Helens in aid of the Steve Prescott Foundation. It was a great day. The rain held off as well. Stars of stage, screen and TV were there, plus notable rugby and football stars as well. People had to bid good money to play alongside us, and a lovely guy called Mike Oxley, he bought me in the auction. It's probably a decision. Oh, 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 probably you're a decision. Kidding. Yeah, it's a decision he now regrets. Don't worry. But anyway, oh, uh, geez, I hope he paid more than ten bob. <laughs> well, he, apparently someone else bid for me, and he was beaten by a fiver. So I, I imagine Mike must have paid a tenner. Anyway, Mike Oxley and I were drawn to face Johnny in the first <laughs> round of this bowls tournament, and I had a chat with him before we took to the green. Johnny, you're uh, drawn against me in this um, Celebrity Bowls tournament. Did you pick me particularly because you know you could flatten me? We did a draw. It was filmed live. It went out on Facebook. <laughs> I won't, you see, this is what I'm. I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to be hoisted by my own petard. Because initially I was like, great. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't think you're a bowler, but first time look, all of that. I'm not mouthing off anymore. <laughs> it's like when Saints should, you know, wallop a team. You go on social media and say something, and then, you know, it, it just all, it all goes awry. So, no, it wasn't planned. <laughs> it wasn't fixed. No, no, I mean, it wasn't like I was looking in the bucket and picking your name out. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to get. To I wasn't. The... I didn't purposely <laughs> pretend to swirl it round and pick every other. But and we were. I think the last one's drawn. Oh, there you go. So I was just like, yeah, keep that one at the bottom. Keep it at the bottom. <laughs> so it wasn't... when when you bring it up, honestly, it wasn't the bottom of the bucket, but it I... might have been the bottom of the barrel. Is that what you're telling me? I'm not saying you're bottom of the barrel. <laughs> hey, I have every confidence that you'll see me through to the second round. <laughs> I have all the confidence in you about that. But honestly, you'd be amazed here how many first-time bowlers do well. Pick it up quick. There you go. You know. Well, well Mike Oxley, who has been silly enough to pay the money to play with me, he fancied Lee Breers. He fancied Stephen Price. They're not here. He, he actually yeah. fancied. Uh, well, if it was a wedding, if it was a, if it was a wedding, you were the you know. <laughs> The bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> We're still sat at the table. <laughs> well, he's worried to death is my partner because he is a bowler extraordinaire. Ah, but that's that's who won it last year. There you go. Captain of the bowls team, Ben. In fact, we didn't let him bid this year. <laughs> we didn't. We all got fed up. So if you're with somebody who knows this green, you have already got a massive advantage. And every time you bowl... And it's terrible. He'll pat you on the back and say, don't worry. I've got this. Your new nickname will be The Slack. 
I've, I've had a few nicknames in my time. <laughs> That's the one you don't want to stick. <laughs> hey, up, here comes the slack. I'll, go. I'll have that. But it's semi-finals. I'll have that. Don't worry. I'll, I, I will have that. Plus, if you knock us out with him at first round, you've got the shame of the cup in my dad's memory. And you knocked me out. Spur that in mind, if you want. I knew, I knew. I'm not that bold that... yet, but thanks for your encouragement, <laughs> Sean Gibson. I knew that. You that said that case. with genuine pleasure. Are you out? <laughs> <laughs> how, de- how very dare she? How very dare she? John, you do fantastic work for the Steve Prescott Foundation. You're a massive St. Helens fan. Just, just tell those of us who don't know where it all began, because you're a, you're a Thato Heath lad, aren't you? I am a Thato Heath lad, and I think. Originally, it stems from a guilt of I always climbed in at Nosley Road and never paid. <laughs> so I've always felt like I owed them something. I did, I lost my jacket once. I was calling over at security guard coming, I jumped off my cagoule. I was running along and the only thing holding on was the elastic round the wrist. The back of it came off. So I had to tell my mum that a Wigan fan had beat me up and took it off me. <laughs> That's the sad truth. Is that the truth? <laughs> But, um, so you felt guilty no, and you thought you better support them. I, I, I've always supported them. It's I think I say, I think you know we had glass, we had everything, and we've lost industry. You know we have lost things, but in all sincerity, we've always had sense. It's a focus of pride. It's something that brings us together. It is the, the very epitome of community. And then with Steve Prescott, he just inspired the best in everyone, and it. It's, it's beyond the legs, so do you know what I mean? And it crosses the board, you know what I mean? Uh, with all fans, with everyone, with the Steve Prescott Cup, and you're going, with something like this, I honestly, for the money we've raised, it's fantastic. And obviously every charity has suffered during lockdown. They have. This, today, beyond what we raise, is a brilliant reminder that it never went away. It perseveres. It endures and it gets her. And like he said, you know what I mean? Mm. What, what, what the mind believes, the body achieves. And he, he just, he remains an inspiration to all of us. It's, it's, it's one of them, I don't think of it as a charity. I think it's a belief. It's a system in the town. And during lockdown with the Black Brook lads, you know, the Black Brook lads, you know, the yes. first ones to set that shop up overnight, Delivered to people yes. in lockdown, everything, everybody came together. And a day like this, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm proud to see St. Anthony's folk coming out, getting together, remind themselves what we're capable of. And I think that's what he left us is. Don't write yourselves off. Yeah, he's, he was an inspiration to a hell of a lot of people, he really was. And, and as you say, his, his, his legacy his legacy lives on. And, I've seen I've seen the pictures of you on the bus coming back from Wembley this year. You had a time and a half, didn't you? <laughs> we, <laughs> well, we missed it. <laughs> we missed the bus. We missed it. We didn't know you had to sign in. Every stop off on the way down, we were the last ones on the bus. And then, we, but only because we were we were stopping for self. You know what I mean? It was that kind of day. But yeah, twenty minutes out. They said we could get on, you know, players coach. Yeah. And you go, oh, we've landed on here. And then they went, there's no way you're getting on players coach. <laughs> Second team. So then we had to ring this coach out. We go, I know you said don't come back. We've got a lift. We ain't got a lift. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you come back? So we added 40 minutes to the journey. But what an atmosphere. I mean, man, I've, I've, been, at, I've been at Wembley when, you know, Wigan nilled us. Yes. I've had the worst coach rides home. I've had the best. And to be honest, like since Cardiff, I actually realised how long it had been. Thirteen. That we, 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 Thirteen. It, I mean, it, 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 you know, it had been worrying since year one. You here? Just why did it have to be our year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they've that never was, done, they've never done it in the grand final. Yeah, but John. you know what happened with that? I turned up. Me and the family. I won't lie. We'd been on one early morning. They put me in the royal box, didn't they, with Harry? I must have called him every name other than his proper title. <laughs> because in between shouting, get it effing wide, move the ball. You're not going to do him down the effing centre. I'm going, I'm sorry, Your Honour. <laughs> I called him Your Majesty. <laughs> I'm calling him everything. <laughs> 
Is this why he's given up the, the pension? Yeah, that's why he left the country. I, I, I can't go to another final with him. <laughs> Everybody else suited and booted. And me and my retro Saints top, you know, with a big Guinness stand out in front of it going. <laughs> well, your honourable uh, thing of a thing of a jig. Your honourable thing of a jig. Um, because at the end he was lovely actually. He did turn around. He went. I take it from your comments, the game didn't quite go your way, <laughs> and I can't tell you what my response was. For legal reasons. Never did I think it had a bit. Wrong. And the worst bit was, you know, when they come up to get the medals, everyone's going to see Johnny Vegas turn having a go at Roby. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm on social media going, no, I said, uh, I'd look, boys, in the way, no, your lips weren't saying that. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a... But that it was, was a... it was this this year, we we, we needed it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We really did. And we're, we're in form, so we sort of not come back no. with it. We're looking, you know yeah. what I mean? We are looking good. And when, I'm, I'm, I'm not being arrogant. Got this incredible squad now. all like this out the season you know without, without, and it feels like they're all playing for each other and they that's do. what you want that's Absolutely. what you want from a club and they've got young kids coming through Lewis Dodd Jack Wellsby what about let me take you back let me take you back to Old Trafford last year what about that last second of the grand final last year I I got stick because my thing was like I'm at a certain age and my bladder's going <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've got to go the loo. So I asked my lad, you know, to pause it. So when I came back, I watched it in real time and you're going, it's the stuff you couldn't, it was, it was the wide to west for my generation. You will never, ever, ever tired of that. But it was, it was like, it's unbelievable because obviously there's that, that look of it, you know what I mean? A little, about, luck, about, hey. a little bit of luck, but you go, you take it where you yep. can get it. And you'll you have make it, your own. You'll have games where you feel the refs against you, you have all this, but you're going, I, 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 just disbelief. Disbelief at first, but, th- but then again, going, we have plenty of games where we earn it, you know what I mean? You grind out a win, some are tougher than others. With that one, you're just going, uh, Furry tail's too small a word. Very much so. But my son in London going, it's like, he gets scared <laughs> when I get so excited. Because he's grown up in London, you know, going, he's it, filming me whilst trying to text 999. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mar- marvellous moment, but it will, n- it, it, Johnny, it will never beat. It will never beat. Never beat you. Wide to West. <laughs> never beat you. Wide, wide to West was, wasn't it, just? The greatest. That bit, and you go, I know, but I love it, because when you drop your, you know, and you go, I'm here for both teams. <laughs> and you're going, no, no, this is... I need one, I need one. We've got the mug in the eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have everything because you go... But you can't, like I say, you're blessed in sport if you've witnessed it first hand. Correct. You know what I mean? When, when you've seen it for yourself, you can show someone a video, you can tell them about it, but they can't know what it's like to actually be there going, it's happening. It's actually happening and it's happening now. There are a million and people that's who were there, you know. There are a million people who were there at that day, at the Wide to West Day. They all say, oh, I remember it. I no, according to Saints, we had a capacity of 18,000 <laughs> and that's what they tell the taxman. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a derby once and you really couldn't be... You know, before it was all seated and Saints went... And a cracking crowd of 17,000, you go, give over. <laughs> Can't move, it's like being in a mosh pit. 17,000. I want my cagoule back. <laughs> Johnny, you'll never lose your enthusiasm. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here and it's be with you. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Here. Really, thank, thank you. you for coming along. And you know you're a legend, Lee. It's your voice. It's not the same watching a match without hearing you, and I mean that genuinely. Thank you very much. And what about my mate who is listening to this now as well, the little fat fella? Oh, little fat fella, you're biased, you're Yorkshire. Get over yourself. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go, Steve-O. You are biased, you're from Yorkshire. Get over yourself. All in the best possible taste, of course. Listen, you know as well as I do, there's only one good thing about the M62. It <laughs> comes from Lancashire and it goes into the glorious height of Yorkshire. The only thing that I'm pleased about going over to Lancashire that they don't have a toll system. You don't <laughs> have to you don't have to pay to go into that Lancashire.
Well, we, we might just put a, a toll bridge on just to make sure you, <laughs> you keep out. And let me tell you, though, that uh, that we, that's Mike and me, we actually knocked Johnny and his partner out in the first round. <laughs> that wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. And talking of Vegas, I know that Vegas is such a Lancastrian. He is deep, deep down. And he knows that I'm Yorkshireman. He does, He indeed. knows that I'm a Yorkshireman. I bump into him uh, on several occasions... Uh, in the past. The last time was down at, at Wembley two years ago. He's one of the great characters in, uh, attached to rugby league. He's a very, very intelligent man and he knows rugby league inside out. The only thing that I regret, he wasn't born in Yorkshire. We're just about done and uh, World Cup apart. Uh, just wondering what's happening down under. I wonder what your spies are telling you from 12,000 miles away. Well, the thing is, as we mentioned earlier in regard to the pandemic, there, there, there are a few problems, uh, people having to go into isolation, etc. and that. Uh, but the top two sides are looking as though they will repeat last year's grand final, Melbourne and Penrith. Penrith went through a bit of an injury crisis, but they've been able to just, you know, get them back into the swing of things. They had a good win over over the uh, the, the Sydney Roosters. In fact, it was their fourth straight win over that particular side and there's a lad called Matt Burton he played at 5'8 this kid is sensational scored two tries kicked four goals 211 running meters three line breaks and seven tackle busts that is a player that you would have said wow he could be selected for Australia to be included in a World Cup let's hope that he can be because he's got the talent this kid Indeed so. 2022, we might well see him. And interesting, you call him a 5'8". Obviously, you haven't lost your Australian heritage, even though Johnny Vegas wants you to lose your Yorkshire one. There you go. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll call, I'll call him a standoff. But before we go, Eddie, um, I'm hearing rumours that uh, there's a delay for the National Rugby League Museum. Now, remember, the council, they bought the... George Hotel and for those that don't know that's where the game of rugby league was born in 1895 um, and I am so looking forward to the reopening of course my museum was at the George Hotel where mm. else should you have where the game's, game was born you have that museum and, and I just hope that uh, I know it's difficult through the pandemic but I do hope that people realize that we have to still keep earning money having donations etc we want our rugby league museum to be open as soon as possible indeed we do indeed we do it uh, it, it is a a vital part of the game the heritage of the game and when we were at Headingley we saw what they've done at at uh, the Leeds Rhinos ground attached to the Yorkshire Cricket Club didn't we I mean it was, it's a fantastic thing that's going to be open there shortly really is yeah, Heritage well, of the game. Uh, yeah, that just gives you some indication that uh, there are certain people, Gary Hetherington is certainly one of them, that realises that we, we cannot forget the past. Without the past, we keep talking about it. You know, you've got to remember the people who dug the well whilst we are taking the water. Now, we have to make sure that that museum is open soon. I hope that there's no delays. Because I can remember when I had it down there, Eddie, the people who came from overseas, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Australia, uh, it, it was just amazing the amount of people that came to pay tribute to those wonderful pieces of memorabilia that was donated, that uh, was always put up there, so that the youngsters can just look and say, wow, was he that good? Yes, well, I'd like to be as good. It's not only there just for the older people to reminisce. It's to give the encouragement to all young people that this game, and I'll say it again, it's the greatest game of all. Yeah, you've always said that. You've said that for years and years, as long as I've known you. Thanks very much for being there, as always. Good to talk, and uh, see you in seven days' time. Take care, top man. <laughs>